Welcome to the Sankofa Ancestor Shrine, where every week we invite spiritual black folk to reconnect with our ancestors as we journey through the crossroads. Please consider donating through patreon.com slash Sankofa Shrine. Ancestors, thank you for keeping an eye on us, even when we haven't been keeping an eye on ourselves. Please wrap these thoughts around us as comfort, that we are blessed. Please remind us of our blessings. Please remind us of the things that we still have to be thankful for, for those things that we can still hold into our hands, into our hearts, our souls as ours, no matter what is occurring. Help us to remember that we are cherished, that we are worth cherishing, that you cherish us, that our place here on this earth, on this planet, during this time is not for nothing, that it is something that is cherished by you, by the earth, by our situation, just from us being what we are uh, and what we're capable of giving, but also what we do, just do naturally every day and emanate. Help us to remember that we are carried. We are not alone. You're with us. Our spirit guides are with us. Nature is with us. Asashe Ya is with us. And we have these abilities to reach out to these resources and understand that we're protected and backed up by a great power. Ashe. Hello. Instead of a sacred movement today, um, we are going to be doing sacred meditation. I found this wonderful script for a self-love meditation on a site called Dharma Crafts. The author of it is a person named Samantha Feller um, with an organization called Yoga International. And I will put the link to where I found this and a few other meditations um, that you may be interested in um, down in the description box. Uh, but I did want to give that little introduction to what we are about to do, a self-love meditation. Um, looking out at the waterway in my backyard. And um, yeah, we are also going to do our fire breathing, keeping our lungs, lungs strong as we can, right? Oh, so uh, right now let's do our three deep cleansing breaths and then we will be holding our uh, stomach area so that we can feel when our uh, in our womb, if you can get your hands down there, that would be really nice and a beautiful reconnection if you have a womb. Um, but you're trying to feel your stomach go out when you breathe in and in when you breathe out and, um, what else? Oh, I, and it, you know, we're going to do 200. However, if that's too much for you, this is not a competition. This is building up strength. This is getting oxygen into our minds, uh, to help us get a, more connected with the spirit realm. Um, so at no point, um, if you're feeling dizzy, should you continue to stop and, um, you know, uh, just breathe normal and, uh, build up slowly with how much you're, um, with how much you're doing your fire breathing. Start with maybe 50, build your way up, uh, the next week, the next week, the next week. All right.
once you're settled, close your eyes or soften your gaze and tune in to your breath. Notice your breath without trying to change it. And notice also if you feel tense or relaxed without trying to change that either. Inhale through your nose and then exhale through your mouth. Continue to take deep, full breaths in through your nose and out through your mouth. As you breathe, become aware of the state of your body and the quality of your mind. Where is your body holding tension? Do you feel closed off or shut down emotionally? Where is your mind? Is it wandering or is it at home within the breath? Is your mind at ease or filled with restlessness, negativity, and doubt? Place both hands over your heart and continue to inhale through your nose and exhale through your mouth. Ask yourself, how does it feel to place my hands over this tender area, this place where I experience love for self and others? Let your breath become more smooth and effortless and begin to breathe in and out through your nose. Feel the flow of air moving into your lungs and then back out into the world. With each exhale, imagine you are releasing any negative thoughts that may be lingering in your mind.
continue to focus on your breath. On each inhale, think, I am worthy. And on each exhale, I am enough. Let each inhale draw in self-love and each exhale release what is no longer serving you. Take a few minutes to breathe and recite this mantra internally. I am worthy. I am enough. Notice how you feel as you say these words to yourself. If your mind wanders at any point, know that it's, it's the nature of the mind to wander. Simply bring your attention back to the breath. Notice how your thoughts come and go, whether positive or negative, and simply allow them to pass on by like clouds floating in the sky. Now visualize yourself standing in front of a mirror and look into your own eyes. What do you see? Pain and sadness? Love and joy? Neutrality? Regardless of what appears in the reflection, tell yourself, I love you. You are beautiful. And you are worthy of happiness. Know that what you see in the mirror in this moment may be different from what you see the next time you look. Imagine now that you could breathe into your heart and visualize love pouring out of your hands from your palms straight into your heart. Let this love warm and permeate you from your heart center filling the rest of your body. Feel a sense of comfort and calm traveling up through your chest into your neck and head, out into your shoulders, arms and hands, and then down into your ribs, belly, pelvis, legs and feet. Allow a sensation of warmth to fill you from head to toe Breathe here and know that love is always available for you when you need it. When you're ready, take a few more deep mindful breaths and softly open your eyes and sit for a few moments to acknowledge the unique experience you have had during this meditation. Refer back any time to this practice or any other resources you may have whenever you need to create a loving space 
for yourself. Allow self-love to enable you to build a stronger relationship with yourself and allow you to show up more fully in your own life. Greetings, family. Welcome to the Sankofa Shrine. I'm your host, Tatami, and today I'm feeling really good. I'm feeling pretty happy. I hope you are too. I hope your stimulus check has come in the mail or you've been able to find and maintain work. Um, I hope your family as well, um, that you're finding healing, that you're finding safety. Um, I did want to today discuss the... Um, I wanted to discuss balance because I've noticed a lot of people are really finding time to go within themselves, find what makes them happy, find what makes them, um, you know, genuinely feel, you know, uh, genuinely understand their path, their journey, what they want to do, what they want to focus on. Um, I've seen a lot of new YouTube channels, which is really cool. I don't think everybody's trying to be a YouTuber, which is, a, you know, it's a whole other thing. But I do think a lot of people are, are using this venue, using the internet as a way to reach out. Um, it makes me excited to think that uh, sometime in the future, that just might be a skill that everybody has is just talking on video uh, and communicating with each other in that way. I do think that's the future. Um, so it's been very interesting seeing the different ways that people are coming into themselves, choosing their journey. Um, excuse the lighting and the noise and all this stuff. My husband decided to randomly, always he sleeps out here on this sofa when he falls asleep in front of his show. But then he woke up and just decided to go back to the room right as light was hitting and I was about to make this um video <laughs> so we are in a totally different location and my kids echo in a different way out here in the living room so give me a second let me go see what they're doing so balance today i have a little bit a little poem a page to read out of this book that i also uh purchased with help from the patrons on patreon thank you everybody i purchased this one i think last year or maybe the year before that, I'm not even sure. This is called The Language by Early August. I'll leave a link down below. Um, I just saw this, This so I, maybe she followed me on Instagram, maybe I followed her, um, and I saw her book, and I purchased it, and it was just these little beautiful nuggets of wisdom, similar to other books that we've had. Um, it says here that uh, Early August is an author based in Compton, California, um, and so this is a collection of poems in free verse that travel through her thoughts as she transcends to her higher self. I think that um, this is just a, a really beautiful thought process of internal healing, and she, she does, it's a very cute book, a very short um, very sweet, it's got a little bit of journal pages in the back, which I really love, um, and we've only gone over uh, some of them. I want to say maybe three or four times we've read poems from this book. But I um, opened to a random page and found this page called Hostage, which was so interesting to me. I feel like um, these poems really speak to uh, wh where we are, right? With the last one was Solitude, and this one was Hostage, and a lot of people are being felt, hostage, felt held hostage by the situation they're in right now. Some people feel hostage held hostage in their house like I can't get out I can't go do things I can't I had plans I had a life I had things to do some people feel held hostage from making the money right their their business is shut down or their place of work is shut down what they do is not considered essential so they can't really do it some people have felt held hostage like um they they have to go to work even though it's dangerous right we got the meat industry people are like you, you're gonna force us and we ain't even get paid extra uh, there's so many hostage situations um and so finding peace and finding balance I think is going to be so important so in this case though she's talking about being uh holding something hostage uh yourself that you're not willing to let go and so that's kind of the balance of this thing is while people are at home 
they're really trying to find the things within themselves that they want to nurture and the things they want to release, the things that they want to get better at, the things they want to enjoy in their limited time, or the things that they, um, they're realizing things just aren't working out for them. They're realizing they've been wasting their time at stuff, or maybe it is time to just do that thing, to leave behind what they've always been doing and go into something new. So, um, and here I think she's, uh, the poem is about love, but, uh, in relationships, um, not always romantic, perhaps. Um, but I think that this can be applied to so many other situations as well. She said, we should never place expectations or limitations on the growth of one another. Oh, that's so important. I think that one's really important because um, not pa placing expectations or limitations on the growth of another person is really important because I think we in this society because we're raised to be so competitive it feels hurtful when other people come up right it feels like you're being left behind you're not getting any you're here still hungry blah 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 but it, it, it there's no need for that there's there really is no need for us to want other people to fail or us to need other people to fail um there is uh ways there are ways to still be able to appreciate other people's come up to not be resentful of them all the time and still be able to you know be able to need to nurture ourselves or find a way to nurture ourselves we don't always have to be resentful or blaming it on other people because we're always in this win-lose competitor loser you know what i'm saying uh situation um so i thought that per first sentence is so important we should never place expectations or limitations on the growth of another person don't expect them to be the top of the world don't expect them to um or don't don't try and stop them from their getting to the top of the world either Expectations and limitations on growth are the ingredients for heartbreak. Mm. Once you start expecting and putting all these things on somebody um, or something, um, or you start trying to actively hinder others, you're, you're no longer working from a place of love, of just genuinely wanting to support and um, receive support and all of those things, right? You're working from a totally different mindset. We have to learn to give and receive, how to water someone else and to be watered. Oh, so beautiful. We have to learn to give and receive. We have to learn to give and receive. Uh, I think a lot of people um, are often what, really good with one or the other. You know, they're either really, they're a give, give, giver. They're always trying to find ways to give or they're a receiver, receiver, receiver. They're always fi trying to find ways to take. And um, finding that balance between those two, again, is really difficult, you know, finding the, the balance when you're when you're playing the game of life with with competing, but not being like resentful of everybody else and the, everybody else's achievements and, uh, you know, how far you should be able to go. And then uh, conversely, there needs to be, a, you know, a way of um, being watered, a way of allowing yourself to be watered. Uh, and recognizing that you've been watered. <laughs> Isn't that so what I think a lot of corporations are coming to realize is they, they have to start um, recognizing who, who's, actually, um, who's actually making the money, right? Who actually is the real importance to the company because it's not actually the CEO. They don't actually put in the work and get things done, right? It's been all the essential workers, um, out there. So it, it's been interesting. It's been funny because, you know, I feel like people like Jeff Bezos will, will wax poetic about themselves. Elon Musk will wax poetic about themselves, but you see them on like Twitter or on a podcast. I think it was Elon Musk was just like going off about sales, about something, <laughs> about sales goals and I'm like oh <laughs> you mean when the little guy ain't buying your shit you ain't shit oh when the little guy ain't building your shit you ain't shit so you know recognize when you get watered too I think a lot of people will totally forget all the people that came up with them and will just act like they've watered themselves and I think that's so interesting you know you recognize when you've been watered and allow other people to water you and recognize what being watered for what it is right 
we um we must love one another through all conditions especially the uncomfortable ones so um i do think that that was another really interesting point to um our lives today because it reminds us that well i hear a lot of people are really struggling with their families struggling with staying home my family is pretty close-knit we don't typically struggle with that in fact we we often are like we need a break from each other like what's going on we just been hanging out too long so finding um the, for for the families that do find themselves struggling, remembering that these things aren't forever, that you can still love and support each other. My son just come out here like, I've been cleaning up all day. Nobody asked him to clean up, first of all. Second off, he woke up 10, 15 minutes ago. He ain't been cleaning up all day. All right. <laughs> they cleaned up last night, but they didn't clean up this morning. All right, so... Oh, through the uncomfortable ones was what I was talking about. The, um loving each other through those those really difficult times the uncomfortable times right these times that are getting hard it's getting like what's the next step what's going on how are we going to pay for this how are we going to pay for that and like y'all i've never been more like should i have even had kids than like right now where i'm like i just don't even know what's next like guys i've been like hoarding food because i'm just like i just don't even know i felt like there's a food shortage coming so i went and got me like a 20 pound bag of flour <laughs> I'm like, this isn't a game, okay? Because it's just like, there are responsibilities here and the government is clearly just not going to help, right? There's just limited help that's coming. So, you know, the, it, it's uncomfortable and there's going to be stress and there's going to be all this uncomfortability. But at the same time, finding that peace, finding time to make peace with yourself and finding time to create peace with either your spouse your kids your situation that you find yourself in maybe it's a roommate maybe it's just your job maybe it's uh the things are falling apart around you in ways that i can't even imagine um but still finding those times to love yourself support yourself love your situation support your situation and of course reaching out to your ancestors finding faith in your ancestors i was listening to someone the other day um yesterday i think and she was doing like a weekly reading and she was talking about that need to have faith in yourself because if you if you don't have faith in your ancestors, if you don't have faith in your spirit guides, if you don't have faith in your in your goals in your beliefs, there's a good chance that that will not happen. There's a really good chance that that will all just slip through your fingers and you'll just be regretting it your whole life. Whereas you can instead release some of this stress, hand it to the ancestors, hand this, you know, feeling of dread, feeling of worry, and commit fully to the work and uh, that you need to put in, um, knowing that you're backed by the ancestors, knowing that you're backed by the ancestors, and uh, you can have this power behind you, this pull, because firstly, you're not wasting all that energy on stress, on fear, on worries, right? And that takes up a shit ton of energy. That takes up so much time and energy. It's ridiculous. And by the time you thrown off those shackles you're often exhausted so it, it, avoiding that step by handing that over and letting that go and just putting yourself fully into the work that needs to be done allows you to just concentrate all of that energy all of that right and channel it straight into what needs to be done um so that's that's really a a good tool to remember you have and you know if that's the ancestors you can sit at your ancestor altar if that's asasheya mother earth you can be outside by yourself and put your hands into the earth and just breathe just relax just meditate find a place of land to just sit in for a second where people aren't going to talk to you for a second um just try and find that even if it's you know not 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 that much land even sometimes you know you sometimes you got to sit on the sidewalk honey and, and and that's all you have and don't forget that there's earth right underneath there the city is still land it's still land so you know go on out there and just reconnect connect with the wind connect with what it, whatever it is that you can at this time and um, draw on that strength, release it, just imagine it all draining out towards uh, for the ancestors or into the earth or b both, you know, a lot of us do both with nature and the ancestors. Um, so really find a way to release that, give it to them and, and find, feel, fill yourself with the energy of, you know, them backing you up, of them uh, supporting you. 
and then channel into what it is you need to do and don't don't allow yourself to be drained so heavily by the stress but if loving someone keeps you or the other person from growing it's time to stop watering a dead situation so i think that is another thing that um a lot of people could probably work on during this time um is the idea of releasing things that are just no longer serving you so that could be a person that could be a situation that could be, you know, random crap around your house. You know what I'm saying? That could be, it, it's time to move on from this person, this uh, job, right? This boss. Um, it could be anything of that nature. Recognizing when you're watering a dead situation is really important because we can be adding all these things into our life. Like, oh, I have time. I'm going to be adding in this um, task, this game, this language, this book, this, you know, workbook, this anything. I could be add, just adding things into my life and oh I, I I didn't realize like I actually there was a bunch of things that I needed to release you know uh, and I think it's really um, it's it's always nice to think of getting things right it's always nice to think of uh, getting new new spiritual items new spiritual tools physically or spiritually mentally what have you and at the same time though it's not always as fun to think about releasing to think about you know, just sitting with your hands on your root chakra and mentally cutting cords with everybody just to just to release for today, just to release, you know, even if you're about to see one of those people an hour from now, just releasing for the day, taking a giant knife and just cutting all those cords and watching them float away mentally. Right. Um, so let it go and let it grow, she says. Let it go and let it grow. Uh, and that's so important. I mean, even if it's your, you know, your spouse, right? You can cut cords and just be cut from them for a minute, for a minute, and just be you. You know, there was this time when I went to this jazz concert like last year, and I just cut cords with everything and walked in there, and I felt like so free. And then the band was playing old time jazz it was so random but i enjoyed it the only thing i didn't enjoy was that they had these little glasses with this juice with these berries and stuff it looked so good there was no alcohol there was it was not sparkling nothing okay it was just juice i was like this is the old people's home y'all are well well capable of drinking why are there no drinks up in here but that was the only thing that was the issue. It was a beautiful balcony. The wind was ripping. I had cut cords with everything. I almost forgot who I was a few times. I was just enjoying the music, smiling with the elders, enjoying, you know, the energy. So, um, oh, my family is trying to get up, y'all. But we only have one more sentence. She says, letting go doesn't mean stop loving, but there's no use in holding love hostage. Honey, okay, so that is my last point. It doesn't really matter if you still love that goal or if you still love that thing that you've been wasting a lot of time on, person, situation, goal, hobby, what have you. You can still love it. Look up some people who, who, who are doing it professionally or doing it as a hardcore hobby who still have time, effort, and ability, what have you. Follow them, love it, support people, uh, what have you. But you can still let things go and still love them. You know what I mean? You can still let go of those goals and still love them and still be okay with it not being you. And focus on the thing that is you. The thing that you've come to realize is your real goal, is your real passion, is the thing that you have the ability to work for and towards. Um, so, you know, while people are coming into themselves and trying to decide and I think we're about to see a lot of recalibrated careers I think we're about to see a change in how just not only how people operate in their daily lives but I think we're about to see like people see this as a reset in a lot of ways I think we're going to see a, a reset in how a lot of people uh, act as a community how a lot of people act um at home, how a lot of people react to their uh, environment, you know, the nature environment, the global environment, the city environment, the communal environment. And we start to realize, you know, really how we impact each other and uh, what a, a lot of things have been revealed for the mess that they are, too. Uh, so I think we're a lot to, about to see a lot of changes within people and without a people. And um, it's about to be very interesting. So I hope today's 
talk really uh, inspired you a little bit uh, on your own path and your own journey within that. And I will see you next time. May your ancestors and spirit guides be with you at every crossroads.